Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be playing Fire Trap on Impoppable. And I just took a quick look at how much money I have, how many shards I have, and what level I'm at. And I just remember, I just feel how long ago this video was filmed. I'm at level 61 when this video was filmed, and right now I'm at level 68. Also, I have way more shards compared to how many shards I had in the video. I have about 20,000 now. And just thinking about shards, I remember I saw some screenshot somewhere and someone said I couldn't get my first epic wish orb until I got to level 40 because of how sharding. And then I thought about it. What if you ended up sharding every wish orb you got until you got 3,000 shards? And then you make an epic wish orb, actually it's 3,500, and that one epic wish orb gives you a Thoughts 1 cannon, and then you put that Thoughts 1 cannon on, and then, yeah, you got a lot of wish orbs, and you pretty much make up all those wish orbs that you broke, or sharded, but I feel like that would, that would require a lot of RNG to be on your side. But, but still, imagine if you did do that, then you'd probably destroy everyone else in every Martian game until you get into the higher levels when everyone else has everything. Let me think about it. I think 3,500 shards is a lot of commons, a lot of uncommons. You're probably not even going to get many rares. Yeah, it'll still take you a long time to get that many shards. But that's considering you shard every single weapon you get. I wonder if some levels on easy slash hard are actually beatable without any weapons or trinkets. Or allies. Yeah, I should test that someday. But then something scary hit me. Well, it's not scary. It's something that I'm nervous about. Even though it never really happened yet, and I don't think it will happen... Although there's a chance. You know how NK's been nerfing stuff? And I was just usually playing and I was like, Wow, this is so good. Next update. Boom, it's nerfed. Or, yeah, every time I'm like, Wow, this is so good. Next update gets nerfed. And there's something that's been really good. And still hasn't been nerfed yet. I hope they don't nerf it, and that's the Thoughts 1 cannon. It allows you to get Wish Orbs. They actually did nerf it a bit because they limited you to 30 Wish Orbs per game. And that's only because of the Martian games. If this was just a normal, impossible level, there's only one time when I actually managed 30 Wish Orbs. And that was a lot of luck. Other than that, I can't really get 30 Wish Orbs in one game. And what I'm thinking about is, what if one day, NK decides to make it so that um, the Thoughts 1 cannon can't just make Wish Orbs in, from Moabs anymore. The only reason I thought about that was because I was just, you know, sharding all the uncommons and common Wish Orbs I got. And I thought, these Wish Orbs had to come from somewhere. Someone had to make them. If wish orbs were all made from shards, where'd shards come from? So that means if I if I got a wish orb and I decide to shard it, I'm essentially just losing shards. So that that was what I was thinking. And I thought, imagine if let's say you were making epic wish orbs. And then you sold them to someone actually not sold because the game just gives them to you for completing levels. Let's just say you worked really hard and you made a wish orb, and then someone else just shards it. They're like, yeah, we'll take the shards instead. Obviously, they could have just taken the shards that you used to make that wish orb in the first place. What I'm trying to say is you're losing a lot of shards when you shard a wish orb, even though most of the time it should be worth it. Otherwise, why would you be sharding it? So yeah, that made me think, what if 
you know, you just ran out of shards. In other words, what if NK didn't allow you to do that? Then getting an epic wish orb would be so much harder. Because Flame Princess and her Dot Swan Cannon just gives all the wish orbs. Nowadays, I'd also have one for Sam. Almost called Sam Sai. And on uh, a two lane track like this one, I could get Sai to do it on the other lane. Although, I think <clears throat> Curse Mirrors could feel like a two lane track. Just like how this could feel like a one lane track because you can just place monkeys in one spot on this track. Before, I would usually just split them up one on both sides. That would work, but I kind of need some room for the bad to go. And an amazing way to pop bads. Even better than the Nidal- Actually, no, it's not better than the Nidal Sphere Amulet, but still good. Buying and reselling C4 Charlie's Moab Assassin. Because it is quite amazing. The Moab Assassin does huge amounts of damage, and it's not that expensive to buy and resell, plus the ability is on the moment you buy it back, so shouldn't be that hard. Oh yeah, there's something that happened last video, I made a calculation mistake, actually it wasn't a calculation mistake because I was on a calculator, but I was thinking about making a regrow farm, and I wanted to use BMO to farm a million dollars. And instead of typing a million into the calculator, I put a billion. And I looked and I was like, oh, BMOs have to fill up 83,000 times. And I thought, how long would that take? And it would probably take like hours. Lots of hours. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute, I'm supposed to, a million has six zeros. And I thought, now a million feels so much smaller than I used to remember it. And then it turns out I only need to empty the 12 BMOs 83 times. Or actually 84, because I have to hit 1 million. Not get right below it. And how long does it take for BMO to fill up? Probably... 3 minutes maybe? I don't know, but that's on double the speed. So if it takes 3 minutes for a BMO to fill up, that's 83 times. Let me pull out my calculator again, hopefully not going to make calculation mistakes. So that's 249 minutes. I doubt BMOs take 3 minutes to fill up, but anyways, we'll just use that. And that's just over four hours. Imagine if I actually sat there for four hours collecting BMO cash. That would be the most boring time lapse to watch. It's even more boring than the Bloons TD5 Hero Farm time lapse I made before. Although the screen recorder wasn't working half the time. I don't know why. It, Android screen recorders. And then I just decided to get to round 200 and then I died to those ZOMGs really speedy one. All I did was just place a few temples. It's been two days for some reason because I stopped in the middle of filming this video and I took a two day break. In these two days I worked on a little Zekro Day animation because I watched one of my older animations and I was like this is so bad and I thought hmm how could I make this better? So I decided to reanimate it and I'm probably just gonna upload that on Zekro Day next year. Which is in about five months from now. Yeah, it's not that long. Also, there's something I forgot to say at the beginning of this video, but now that I think about it, it doesn't really make sense to say it now. Other than that, I did unlock my final epic trinket, and it was the Gugu Manometer. I don't know how to test it because I was really thinking about which are some of the best epic trinkets slash weapons slash allies. I decided to do a lot of testing, but it's kind of hard because, you know, different epic trinkets are affected by how you use them. And then that also affects which other, which other characters you brought, which trinkets they have, 
And then depending on the placements, that matters. It also matters on which track you're playing on. And last but not least, it matters about your playstyle. So I have no idea how I'm going to go about the which ones are the best ones. I'm probably just going to explain how they're good for my playstyle. You're going to have different opinions. I have a high feeling it's going to end up like the commando weapon comparison video. Where, yeah. Other than that, I was trying to test Gugu a meter. I barely... Actually, I did read the description. I already forgot. It just says take plus three damage from all sources. What does that mean? So I thought maybe I could put it on Super Monkey and that might work. Also, when I was using all my Epic Wish Orbs, I was thinking, ooh, do I pick between Tech Terror or do I pick between Guru Master? I mean, Guru Manometer. I doubt Guru Manometer would be better than Tech Terror, but I still took it because... Do I want to get a video out sometime sooner, or do I want to win the next Martian games? Tough choice. More Tech Terrors is really helpful, considering I just do a C4 Charlie Moab Assassin spam. Speaking of Moab Assassin, I was with my friends a few days ago, and they were playing uh, Balloons Monkey City Mobile, and they were trying to get contested territory, they were trying to win. And then they got Moab Assassin, they were like, Moab Assassin is so bad! And I was like, oh yeah, right, I remember those days when Moab Assassin was kind of bad. It's not really that good because it's kind of cheap, but... Yeah, it is, it's roughly the same price in Balloons Adventure Time, but for some reason Balloons Adventure Time, I feel like the prices are all pretty cheap. There aren't really many expensive towers. The Tech Terror isn't even considered expensive compared to Balloons TD6, Monkey City, or TD5. Because back then it used to cost like 20k, plus... Yeah, that's not with the upgrades. Just the upgrade itself, which just comes with the Tech Terror, I suppose. Plus it had a pretty OP ability. Then we have the Sun God in this game. And it's pretty cheap. With Humbo's discount, it's even cheaper. Oh yeah, speaking of Humbo, Humbo is a pretty good epic trinket. Because it lowers the prices of all your abilities and I find that really useful. One epic trink- no, one epic ally I was testing was the Cobra. I was like, mm, the Cobra might not make the list. And then I decided to read the upgrades, I was like, hmm, how can I use these upgrades effectively? I used the cooldown upgrade and I wanted to see how much does it really affect it because in a normal impossible game, you have tons of epic trinkets and tons of allies all working together and they all produce different outcomes. It's like, if I made a web, it would be huge because just changing one epic ally or you remove one ally or you got a different upgrade, it would change so much. Although, that just makes me think of all the possible ways you could win on an impossible game. Every possible way to beat Cursed Mirrors on impossible. I still feel like Cursed Mirrors is harder than the other five skull of difficulty track, I forget. Is it the Cursed Heart? No, it can't be called the Cursed Heart. Is it, the, is it called the Black Heart? Well, I never played it. I could have played it if I stuck around for the Halloween event a little bit longer. But really, after getting all the tapes that I really want to play a 5 Skull of Difficulty track that I might not even beat on Impossible, and definitely would be really fun, but I just didn't want to do it. Because I did load up the map, I took a look, it is a map where it's just like a 2 entrance map. Although they meet up in the middle, so you can just put all your balloon popping power in the middle, or at the front, because there's water. They put water at the front. That's not making it that hard, considering you can get a candy dive suit. So, I don't know what the big deal is. I don't know how they managed to make that a 5 skull difficulty track. I feel like Cursed Mirrors is definitely a lot harder. And since they only send you one- oh wait. If they double the balloons they send you, then that would be a uh, 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 definitely five skill of difficulty track. Sending two bads instead of one. 
yeah, I would consider that five spells of difficulty. But I doubt they would do that. Let's say they just send you one map, that, not one map, one bad. That map is still really long because it has to travel the entire heart. Even if they cut it in the middle, it would still be longer than Curse Mirrors. And Curse Mirrors has four entrances. I don't know how they rated that map five stars, but then to be fair, I never played it. I only took a look. Maybe they like alternate rounds. That could work. Like maybe it just comes out from the middle and then like the middle of the heart and it goes out and it's just cut in half or something like that. There's not that many options though. This isn't like Giant Skull where you have four different options. I don't know, I feel like it's probably still hard, but I have a feeling Curse Mirrors is harder. I don't know, it's just that feeling. Although eventually I'm gonna have to play it. When I play it on normal mode, I feel like if I bring all the allies and stuff that I have, I'm just gonna cheese normal mode. And I'm gonna make a video out of it and um I would think, do I really wanna just cheese it and put a Finn and Jake? And that just solos the entire game. And I, yeah, I probably don't want to do that, so I'm going to remove all my trinkets. Trinket only? I mean, no. No trinket, no weapon. Maybe some allies. For easy mode and hard mode. I wonder if I can beat that. No trinket hard mode. Without using any level 3 and up abilities. I might be able to beat that. Doubt it though, because it's a 5 spell of difficulty. Maybe on Sweet and Sour I could do that. There was one trinket I had on the Super Monkey and I removed and I can never put back on. That was back then, I think it was 1.4.2 when I had Wizard Nunchucks on my Super Monkey. It became a useless trinket, but if I never removed it, I would have a trinket that you could never put on Super Monkey. And that would just feel so nice. But anyways, I guess I kind of raged when that happened and I took off the trinket. Regret every bit doing that. But I mean, I guess it happened. We'll just say at one point I had those trinkets on them. I wonder if I can find a screenshot. Maybe. Anyways, we completed this entire adventure and adventure chest. AKA Epic Wish Word. That's all that I think about the Epic Chest. I mean, Diamond Chest. Anyways, I'll leave the episode off right here. See you guys next time.